Paul and Silas in Thessalonica. Now, when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they had they came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul went in, as was his custom, and on three Sabbath days he reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and proving that it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead, and saying, This Jesus, whom I proclaim to you, is the Christ. And some of them were persuaded, and joined Paul and Silas, as did a great many of the devout Greeks and not a few of the leading women, but the Jews were jealous, and taking some wicked men of the rebel, they formed a mob, set the city in an uproar, and attacked the house of Jason, seeking to bring them out to the crowd. And when they could not find them, they dragged Jason and some of the brothers before the city authorities, shouting, These men who have turned the world upside down have come here also, and Jason has received them. and they were all acting against the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, Jesus. And the people and the city authorities were disturbed. And when they heard these things, and when they had taken money as security from Jason and the rest, they let them go. Paul and Silas and Berea. The brothers immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea, and when they arrived, they went into the Jewish synagogue. Now these Jews were more no- noble than those in Thessalonica. They received the world with all eagerness, examining the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. Many of them therefore believed, with not a few Greek women of high standing as well as men. But when the Jews from Thessalonica learned that the word of God was proclaimed by Paul at Berea also, they came there too, agitating and stirring up the crowds. Then the brothers immediately sent Paul off on his way to the sea, but Silas and Timothy remained there. Those who conducted Paul brought him as far as Athens, and after receiving a command for Silas and Timothy to come to him as soon as possible, they departed. Paul in Athens. Now while Paul was waiting for them in Athens, his spirit was provoked within him, and he saw that the city was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons, and in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be there. Some of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers also conversed with him, and some said, What does this babbler wish to say? Others said, He seems to be a preacher of foreign di- divinities, because he was preaching Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him to the Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting? For you bring some strange things to our ears. We wish to know, therefore, what these things mean. Now all the Athenians and the foreigners who lived there would spend their time in nothing except telling or hearing something new. Paul addresses the Areopagus. So Paul, standing in the midst of the Areopagus, said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in every way way you are very religious. For as I passed along and observed the objects of your worship, I found as an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it. Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by men, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God, and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him. Yet he is actually not far from each other of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. And even some of our own poets have said, For we are indeed his offspring. Being the God's offspring, we ought not to think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by art and imagination of men. 
the times of the ignorance God overlooked. But now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he was appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Now when they had heard the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, but others said, We will hear you again about this. So Paul went out from their midst. Then some men joined him and believed, among whom also were Dionysus the Aeropagate and a woman named Damaris and others with him. Acts chapter 18 Paul in Corinth After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. And he found a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, recently come, come from Italy with his wife Priscilla because because Claudius has commanded all the Jews to leave Rome, and he went to see them, and because he was the same trade, he stayed with them and worked, for they were tent makers by trade, and were reason in the synagogue every Sabbath, and tried to persuade Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy arrived from Macedonia, Paul was occupied with the word, testifying to the Jews that the Christ was Jesus, and when they opposed and reviled him, he he shook out his garments and said to them, Your blood be on your own heads. I am innocent. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. And he left there and went to the house of a man named Titus Justus, a worshiper of God. His house was next door to the synagogue. Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, believed in, believed in the Lord together with his entire household. And many of the Corinthians, hearing Paul, believed and were baptized. And the Lord said to Paul one night in a vision, Do not be afraid, but go on speaking, and do not be silent, for I am with you, and no one will attack you to harm you, for I have many in the cities who are my people. And he stayed a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. But when Gallio was proconsul of Achaia, the Jews made a united attack on Paul, and brought him before the tribunal, saying, This man is persuading the people to worship God contrary to the law. But when P Paul was about to open his mouth, Gallio said to the Jews, If it were a matter of wrongdoing or a vicious crime, O oh Jews, I would have reason to accept your complaint. But since it is a matter of questions about words and names, at your own law, see it to yourselves. I refuse to be a judge of these things. And he drove them from the tribunal. And they all seized Sostens, the ruler of the synagogue, and beat him in front of the tribunal. But Gallio paid no attention to any of this. Paul returns to Antioch. After this, Paul stayed m many days longer and then took leave with the brothers and set sail for Syria. And with Priscilla at Aquila at Century, he had cut his hair, for he was under a vow. And then the, and they came to Ephesus. Then he left them there, but he himself went to the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. When he asked him to stay for a longer period, he declined. But on taking leave of them, he said, I, I will return to you if God wills. And he set sail from Ephesus. When he had land, landed on Caesarea, he went up and greeted the church and went down to Antioch. After spending some time there, he departed and went from one place to another through the region Galatia and Phrygia, strengthening all the disciples. Apol Apollos speaks boldly in Ephesus. Now a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus. He was an eloquent man, competent in the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in spirit, he spoke and taught accurately the things concerning Jesus, though he knew only the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue, but when Priscilla and Aquila heard him. They took him aside and explained to him the way of God more accurately. And then he wished to cross to Achaia. The brothers encouraged him and wrote to the disciples to welcome him. When he arrived, he 
greatly helped those who through grace have believed, where he powerfully refuted the Jews in public, showing by the scriptures that Christ was Jesus. Acts chapter 19. Paul in, Paul in Ephesus. And it happened while Apollos was in Corinth. Paul passed through the inland country and came to Ephesus. There he found some disciples, and he said to them, They do receive the Holy Spirit when you believed. And they said, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. And he said, Into what day were you baptized? They said, Into John's baptism. And Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who has come after him, that is, Jesus. What, on hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hand on them, the Holy Spirit came to, him, came to them, and they began speaking in tongues and prophesying. There were about twelve men in all, and he entered the synagogue and for three months spoke boldly, reasoning and persuading them about the kingdom of God. But when some became stubborn and con continued to in unbelief, speaking evil of the way before the congreg congregation, he withdrew from them and took the disciples with him, reasoning daily in the hall of Tyrannus. This continued for two years, so that all the residents of Asia heard the word of the Lord, both Jews and Greeks. The sons of Sceva and God was doing extraordinarily miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons that had touched his skin were car carried away to the sick, and their diseases left them, and the evil spirits came out of them. Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists undertake to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, I adjure you by the Jesus who Paul proclaims. Seven sons of a Jewish high priest named Sceva was doing this, but the evil spirit answered them, Jesus, I know, and Paul I recognize, but who are you? And the man in whom was the evil spirit leaped on them, mastered all of them, and overpowered them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. And this became known to all the residents of Ephesus, both Jews and Greeks. And fear fell upon upon them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was extolled. Also many of those who are now believers came confessing and divulging divulging their practices, and a number of those who had practiced magic arts brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all, and they counted the value of them and found it, found it came to 50,000 pieces of silver, so the word of the Lord continued to increase and prevail mightily. A riot at Ephesus. Ephesus. Now after these events, Paul resolved in the spirit to pass through Macedonia and Achaia and go to Jer Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome. And have, having sent into Macedonia two of his helpers, Timothy and Erastus, he himself stayed in Asia for a while. About that time there there arose no little disturbance concerning the way. For a man named Demetrius, a silversmith who made silver shrines of er Artemis, brought no little business to the craftsmen. These he gathered together with no workmen in similar trades and said, Men, you know that from this business we have our wealth. And you see and hear that not only in Ephesus, but in almost all of Asia, this Paul have persuaded and turned away a great many of people, and saying that gods made with hands are not gods. And there is a danger not only that this trade of ours may come into their the disrepute, but also that the temple of the great goddess Artemis may be counted as nothing, and that she may be may even be disposed from her magnificence, she whom all Asia and the wor world worship. And when they heard this, they were enraged, enraged and were crying out, "Great is Artemis of the Ephesians!" So their city was filled with the confusion, and they rushed together into the theater dragging with him Gaius and Aristarchus, Macedonius, who were Paul's companions in the travel. But when Paul wished to go in among the crowd, the disciples would not let him in, and even some of the Asiarchs, who were friends of his, sent to him and were urging him not to venture into the theater. 
Now some cried out one thing, some another for the assembly was in confusion, and mostly of them did not know why they had come together. Some of the crowd prompted Alexander, whom the Jews had put forward, and Alexander, motioning with his hand, wanted to make a defense to the crowd. But when they recognized that he was a Jew, for about two hours they all cried out with one voice, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. And when the town clerk had quieted the crowd, he said, Men of Ephesus, who is there who does not know that the city of Ephesians is temple keeper of the great Artemis and of the sacred stone that fell from the sky? Seeing that these things cannot be denied, you ought to be quiet and do nothing rash, for you have brought these men of Men here who are neither sacrilegious nor blasphemers of our goddess. Is therefore Demetrius and the craftsmen with him have a complaint against anyone? The courts are open and there are proconsuls. Let them bring charges against another. But if you seek anything further, it shall be settled in the regular assembly, for we are. For we really are in danger of being charged with rioting today, since there is no cause that we can give to justify this commotion. And when he said these things, he dismissed the assembly.